ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवाषा च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवा युगे युगे टू डिलीवर द पायस एंड टू अनाइलेट द मिस्क्रियंस एज वेल एज टू रिय एस्टैब्लिश द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ रिलीजन आई माई सेल्फ अपियर millennium after millennium purport according to bhagavad gita a sadhu holy man is a man in krishna consciousness a person may appear to be irreligious but if he has the qualifications of krishna consciousness holy and fully he is to be understood to be a sadhu and dushkritam applies to those who do not care for krishna consciousness such miscreants or dushkritam are described as foolish and the lowest of mankind even though they may be decorated with mundane education whereas a person who is 100% engaged in krishna consciousness is accepted as a sadhu even though such a person may be neither learned nor well cultured As far as the atheistic are concerned it is not necessary for the supreme lord to appear as he is to destroy them as he did with the demons ravana and kamsa the lord has many agents who are quite competent to vanquish demons but the lord especially descends to appease his unalloyed devotees who are always harassed by the demoniac the demon harasses the devotee even though the latter may happen to be his kin Although Prahlad Maharaj was the son of Hiranyakashipu he was nonetheless persecuted by his father although Devaki the mother of Krishna was the sister of Kamsa she and her husband Vasudev were persecuted only because Krishna was to be born of them so Lord Krishna appeared primarily to deliver Devaki rather than kill Kamsa but both were performed simultaneously therefore it is said here that to deliver the devotee and vanquish the demon miscreants the lord appears in different incarnations in the chaitanya charitamrita of krishna's kaviraj the following verses summarize these principles of incarnation shrishti hetu jay murti prapanche avatare shri ishar murti avatar naam dhare maya titta parabhome shaba avasthan विषय अवतारी धरे अवतार नाम ये अवतार और इनकारेशन ऑफ गॉड है डिसेंड्स फ्रॉम द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड फॉर मटेरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन एंड द पर्टिकुलर फॉर्म ऑफ द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड सो डिसेंड्स इज कॉल्ड एन इनकारेशन और अवतार सच इनकारेशंस आर सिचुएटेड इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड व्हेन दे डिसेंड टू द मटेरियल क्रिएशन दे अस्यूम द नेम अवतार देयर आर वेरियस काइंड्स ऑफ अवतार सच एज पुरुष अवतार्स गुण अवतार्स Lila avatars, Shakti avesh avatars, Manvantara avatars and Yuga avatars all appearing on schedule all over the universe. But Lord Krishna is the primeval lord, the fountain head of all avatars. Lord Sri Krishna descends for the specific purpose of mitigating the anxieties of the pure devotees who are very anxious to see him in his original Vrindavan pastimes. Therefore the prime purpose of the Krishna avatar is to satisfy his unalloyed devotees. The Lord says that he incarnates himself in every millennium. This indicates that he incarnates also in the age of Kali. As stated in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, the incarnation in the age of Kali is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who spread the worship of Krishna by the Sankirtan movement, congregational chanting of the holy names, and spread Krishna consciousness throughout India. He predicted that this culture of Sankirtan would be broadcast all over the world, from town to town and village to village. Lord Chaitanya as the incarnation of Krishna the personality of Godhead is described secretly but not directly in the confidential parts of the revealed scriptures such as the Upanishads Mahabharata and Bhagavatam The devotees of Lord Krishna are very much attracted by the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya this avatar of the Lord does not kill the miscreants but delivers them by his causeless mercy 
appears in every age in his various incarnations, being very kind to his devotees. As I was mentioning this morning, the whole Bhagavatam is a discussion of Krishna and his devotees. There's no meaning to being Bhagavan unless there are Bhagavats. As Prabhupada described that there's no, mean, there's no meaning to be a king without a kingdom, without subjects. So Bhagavan means who has got all opulences, but also opulences and includes, uh, most important is, is, is devotees. So the devotees, they are like the decoration on Bhagavan, of course he is self-sufficient in himself, but even he himself says that aham bhakta parad he no hiya He says that I am not independent. I am dependent on my devotees. So bhakti, this is the message of the Bhagavad Gita, it is the message of all the Shastra. And we require also a bhakta to describe Bhagavad Gita. If we hear Bhagavad Gita from a non-devotee, we won't understand. Here, Prabhupada very nicely explains that there's no material need for Krishna to appear in this world, even to destroy the demons. He can do that through the agency of his various energies, Sometimes we hear it's described in various Puranas, Devi Bhagavatam, different Puranas, how there are some demons that only Devi could destroy. Just like we have Mysore. What's the original name of Mysore? So that is the uh, buffalo demon, the original buffalo from which we all get our milk. So the, the, uh, who was killed by Durga. The idea was no one else could kill such a demon. But actually uh, Krishna can kill. Because Devi, she herself takes energy from Krishna. She is Shakti. But the Param Shakti man, even above Lord Shiva, who is her husband, is Krishna. So Krishna doesn't need to appear in this world to vanquish the demons, but he especially comes to favor his devotees, to pick up the devotees. And you may say, well, he doesn't have to do that, but he does because he loves his devotees. He wants to show favor to his devotees. And another perspective is that he also wants to pick up everybody because ultimately everybody is his devotee. That's why we see even demons killed by Krishna. <coughs> Just like Putana. What was her qualification for getting the position of the mother of Krishna? Just Krishna's mercy, that's all. Because Krishna thought at one point in her existence, in her miserable, wretched, wicked existence, there was a little trace of affection for Krishna. Even though she didn't understand he was God. As soon as she understood he was God, she became angry towards him. Because in her previous life as Ratnamala, she was the sister of Bali Maharaj. And when she first saw Vaman, she thought, oh, what a beautiful young boy. Who is that mother who is fortunate enough to suckle him at her breasts? So there was some motherly affection. You see, even the demons, they may have. Hiranyakashipu also expressed affection for Prala. He was calling him, please come, what have you learned? And as soon as he learned, I learned about Vishnu, then the affection changed. But, so like that, this Ratnamala had a little, there, there was some feeling of affection, even it was mundane, but it was directed towards Vamandi. And then later, when he took everything away, then she became very angry. And she wanted to do harm to him, which she got the opportunity to attempt to do in the next life as Putana. So her existence was basically wicked. 
She came from a b- very bad family. Her brothers were Aghasura, Bakasura, very dangerous family. <laughs> yeah, worse than. So, but Krishna, when he sucked out the life force from her, he took away all her sinful reactions. And at that time, you remember, Neya Vikrama Nasha Sri Pratyavayana Vidyate Swabhapya Sitama Satrayate She did a little she had a little affectionate feeling for me, all right. She wanted to be my mother, all right. Give her the position. So Krishna is so merciful. He wants to deliver everybody. It's not Name Dvesho, he says. I don't envy anybody. I'm not envious of everybody. Krishna says, Samoham Sarva Bhutisha. Name Dvesho Stinapriyaha. Actually, Krishna says, I, I'm equal to everyone. I don't hate anyone. I'm, I, I don't love anyone in particular. But actually, he loves everyone. He says, no one is my priya. That means that he's not biased. That anyone can, even if you're the most sinful, wretched, fallen, miserable wretch, if we turn towards Krishna, he says, all right, okay. Sabadhaman Prithaja, Mamekam Sharanam Raja, Aham Tvang Sabapati Vyamukchai Shami What a promise. Whatever sins you've done, millions of lifetimes, all right, never mind. You came to me, all right. I accept you. So Krishna is so merciful. He wants to deliver everybody. But he particularly comes to, de- to deliver those who are on the path of devotion. We see particularly as Madhya Avatar he delivers Satyavrata Muni, as Rishinga Dev he delivers Prahlad Maharaj. Similarly, in this purport, Prabhupada has mentioned Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who, of course, his devotees are very well known. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, Shivaita Gadatha, Shivas, Adi Gaur Bhaktarinda. There are so many devotees, and some of the names of the prominent devotees are listed in Chaitanya Charitamrita, and it's said that simply by Remembering these devotees, just by remembering their names, one can get love of Krishna. They're so powerful. Any one of them is powerful enough to deliver the whole universe. They're so powerful. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's always accompanied by his devotees, but his intention is to make everyone a devotee. That's what he wants. Because he knows everyone is a devotee. But at the moment they just forgot. That's one outlook of a preacher. On the one hand, we have in Gita that Nama Andushkujino Murha Prapadyante Naradhamaha Maya Paritagyana Asuram Bhavama Shutaha. Krishna says those who are demoniac, they don't surrender to me. Four categories. The foolish, lowest of mankind, deluded scholars, and out and out demons. So they don't surrender to me. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his avatar is especially meant for giving profuse mercy, both in quality and quantity. In quality, his mercy means that he gives love of Krishna up to a standard that is even other avatars, they're not giving. And one cannot, even Krishna himself did not widely distribute this durlava brahmara, this frame love of Krishna that's very difficult even for Lord Brahma to attain. So qualitatively Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's contribution is and quantitatively also He's not just giving to one or two people, one or two Babaji's in Radha Kund, but he's giving to everybody. He's willing to give to everybody. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give this love of Krishna very easily by a very nice process, especially with Nityananda Prabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda is chief assistant 
in propagating Sankirtan. And even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Nityananda that you can do what I can't do. He told that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he left Bengal. He left Navadip and went to Puri. And he told Nityananda, Nityanand came, he came with him. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent him back, you go back and preach in Bengal. More a come, he said. What is difficult for me, you should do. You can do. It's very difficult to preach. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was thinking it's very difficult to preach. The situation there at that time was very difficult. But you do, Nityananda. And he told that instruction he gave that to Nityananda and Haridas. Shuna Shuna Nityananda Shuna Haridas. Savatra Amar Agga Koraha Prakash Pati Ghare Ghare Gya Kara Ebika. Bhaja Krishna, Bhagavad Krishna, Kara Krishna, Shikha. He told Nityananda and Haridas that, come here, I want to tell you, this is my order. You, you reveal it everywhere. Go door to door and tell everyone to worship Krishna, chant the names of Krishna, and study Krishna, Shikha, learn about Krishna, Krishna Upadesh, study Bhagavad Gita as it is. So that was the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Nityananda. But Nityananda, he thought that uh, these people, they're too fallen to chant the name of Krishna. Better they chant the name of Gauranga. That will be better for them. So that's a uh, famous stanza among Bengali Vaishnavas. That Nityananda would go door to door asking the people that Bhaja Gauranga, Kaho Gauranga, Laha Goranga Namare, Jajan Goranga Bhaje Shemara Pranare. He told them that worship Goranga, say the name of Goranga, take the name of Goranga. Whoever worships Goranga, he is my very life. This is Nityanam. So we say that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most merciful incarnation. But practically, if you want to go a step further, we can say Nityananda is even more merciful because he gives Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nitaya karuna habe braje radha krishna pabe. Narotanda says, analyze that how to. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give the gift of love of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. But practically, we can do that by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu. In another song he says that uh, Nitya Karuna, oh no, no, what is that? Shamsara Bhashana Mo Kobi Tucha, Ar Kobi Nitai Chanda, Karuna Hoibe, Shamsara Bhashana Mo Kobi Tucha Hoibe. Actually there is no question of attaining love of Radha Krishna unless our heart is purified, but that is also possible by the mercy of Nityanam Prabhu. So I just was saying that I wanted to introduce a couple of very beautiful songs by Lochandash Thakur, extracted from Chaitanya Mangal, which describe the activities of Nityanand Prabhu in distributing love of God indiscriminately. So he prays, Lochandash Thakur prays. The two songs are very similar actually. That he says, Nitai Gunamani Yama, Nitai Gunamani. That Nityanand Prabhu is just like a jewel of wonderful qualities. <coughs> My Nityanand, he says, Nitai Gunamani Yama, Aniya Premera Banna Vashailo Abani. He said that he brought a flood of love of God and drowned the whole world in a flood of love of God. Premer Bhamma Laya Nitai Ayala Gaura Deshe Dubelo Bhagata Gan Dina Hino Bhashe He brought the ocean of love of God to Gaura Desh, now known more or less as West Bengal. And he drowned all the devotees in love of God. But somehow or other, the rascals, they managed not to drown. And they floated on top. <laughs> <laughs>
But Nityananda had a, he was determined that Dina Hina Pati Pama Nahi Bache, Brahmara Durlaba Prem Shabakara Jache. But Nityananda's intention was that the fallen, so many ways of describing Dean, Heen, Patit, Pamar, that they should, they should also get, even they're trying to run away and avoid it, they should also get love of God that's difficult even for Brahma to get. In Brahma, to get that position, one has to be so pious. But Nityananda wants to give people who are most impious, by force, practically, love of God. Abhadda karuna shindhu nittai katiya muhan ghare ghare bule prem ami arban. So the, uh, he cut a canal from the ocean of love of God and brought that door to door. He made the pipe going door to door and wandering door to door, he flooded everywhere with love of God. That's described that Nityananda he would go even to, even to the Chandals. In those days that was unheard of. Nowadays it, everyone is all mixed up. But in those days the Chandals, they lived outside the village. No one would go near them. If you even saw them you had to take a bath. But Nityananda, he didn't discriminate. He saw everyone is Jeev, everyone is servant of Krishna, everyone should be given the opportunity to take part in the Sankirtan movement. We see that Harirash Thakur came from a Muslim family, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made him Nama Acharya. He gave him the most respected position. Lochan bale mor nitai jeba nab hojelo. Janiya shuniya she atta ghati hoilo. Lochanda says that my nitai, whoever doesn't worship him, even knowing his wonderful qualities, they are simply committing suicide. Unfortunately, most of the people of the world don't know about Nityananda. Now, people, somewhat they're coming to know about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But they have to learn about Nityananda also. We have a lot of work to do. We have to distribute so many books. Chaitanya Charitamrita, we should distribute. Here in South India, people, they, they know Lakshmi Narayana, a very formal kind of worship. But this Kirtan, with dancing and worship of Radha Krishna, that they have to learn. Then another song, Akrodha Paramananda Nityananda Rai Abhimana Shunna Nitai Nagare Berai Akrodha Paramananda He doesn't have any material anger. He says, Par Nityananda, which kind of Ananda? Paramananda means Krishna Bhakti Ananda. And he's, Akrodha means he has no material lust. Kam, Krodha, Lobh, Moha, Matsarya. Although sometimes he becomes angry at the non-devotees if they're offensive. And sometimes even he shows his great mercy to his devotees by apparently becoming angry at them. If you read Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can see all these stories. So, Adham Pati Jiva Dare Dare Gya Hari Nam Maha Mantra Deno Bilaya so going to the homes door to door, again the point given, door to door of all the fallen people, that was Nityananda's speciality. He thought that just like a Kshatriya in fighting, if he can fight with the most famous and difficult fighter and defeat him, then he becomes established as a great, it's no, it's no great achievement to defeat a few insignificant soldiers, but if you can defeat Bhishma, Drona, then that's, that's a great achievement. You see, that's described in the Mahabharata. That there are so many Amuk, their name is not given. 
Arjun shot the arrows and in one hour destroyed 50,000 of the enemy. Just, but when Bhishma, Drona, then their name is a very great thing. So the same thing, if you can deliver someone who's most fallen, and it's a very great achievement. So that was Nityananda's idea, that let me go among the most impious people and try and deliver them, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name will become famous, how his mercy will be broadcast. So he went door to door and he gave the Maha Mantra. How did he give it? By he distributed it. And the only price that was asked was anyone who has a little faith, they can take the Holy Name. Of course, anyone without faith, they wouldn't chant. But even so, Nityananda Prabhu's and his followers they would somehow or other get people to chant, even people without faith. The story is there of Gadadha Das, it's not Gadadha Pandit. Gadadha Das was a follower of Nityananda Prabhu. So Nityananda had his helpers, so they went door to door in different areas asking people to chant Hare Krishna. So Gadadha Das came to the area of the Kazi where he was living. He was famous as a He's a very dangerous person that if he even smelled a Hindu, he'd chop his head off. So, maybe not quite that way. <laughs> Pretty ferocious character. So, Gadadha was simply going door to door in ecstasy, asking everyone, please chant Hare Krishna. So he came and he called out, everyone inside here at the palace, you chant Hare Krishna. Because he came out, he thought he must be a madman. <laughs> who else would do that? So, yeah, who, who, why would, you know, he must, be, he must be crazy, that's all. So he didn't take him very seriously. But Gadadha, he wouldn't give up. He said, no, you chant Hare Krishna. Come on, chant, chant, chant. So he said, okay, I'll, I'll chant Hare Krishna tomorrow. Then Gadadha leapt in the air and said, you already said Hare Krishna once. Now go on chanting. Somehow or other he induced him to chant even without faith. So, jare deke tare kahe dante trina dhari amare kiniya laha bhaja gora hari Whoever he met, whoever Nityananda met, he would put a straw in his mouth, which is a sign of complete submission, and said, do you want to purchase me? Do you want to buy me? I'll become your slave. You only have to do one thing, Worship Gaur Hari, then I'll become your property. Eto bali nitta nanda bhume gari jai, shonar parvat jena dulate lotai. Saying this, nitta nanda would fall on the ground and roll in the dust, looking like a great golden mountain. So you can imagine people, you know, they're just walking in the road and all of a sudden, someone, huge figure of Nityananda, comes up, very humbly comes, why he should come up to you very humbly, you know, just some chandal, who, no one acts humbly towards them at all. Everyone, they keep a distance from them. And if they ever say anything to them, it's simply, ah, gosh, get up. But Nityananda comes up, begging them, please worship Gaurahari, Take me as your slave, and then falls in the dust of them. Who can refuse? Hino avatare ja rotina janmelo, lochan vale she papi, elo or gelo. So Lochanda says that such a merciful incarnation, who does not have any attraction, whose attra attraction for Nityananda did not awake, how sinful must you be not to have any attraction to Nityananda? Such a person simply, what can we say about him? He was born and he died. His life was completely useless. So here we have on the altar, as in most temples of Iskand, Prabhupada installed the deities of 
Gaur Nitya Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, the two brothers Paramakarana Pahum Dvijana, Nitai Gaura Chandra, Shabhavata Sara Shiramani, Kivala Ananda Kanda. The two, Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, together they, they are considered the most merciful of all incarnations because they have given a path which is simply joyful. So let us always remember the great mercy of Lord Nityananda, which is not different from the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's not that it's a different entity. His mercy, it's Krishna's mercy. Krishna is known as Gunarnava. Krishna is an ocean of mercy. Kripasindu. They are different. Gunarnava, that is in the... I'm saying that because that's in the... Gurvashtaka, the first verse. That we sing that. Sangsara dhava nalaliga loka tranaya karanya dhana ganadvam bhaktasya kalyana gunarnavasya vandegara shucharna that the Guru, he gives the, he rains the mercy, but he gathers that mercy from the ocean of all good qualities, who is Krishna, that Kalyana Guna, the quality of, that, that means mercy, the quality of acting for the benefit of others. That is the quality, you see Krishna himself says here, that I come to deliver the devotees, he's always thinking of the benefit of others. Therefore, one of Krishna's names you'll find in Vishnu Sahasrama, as gentleman was mentioning this morning, Mahatma. He's a great-minded soul. He's simply thinking of the benefit of others. Krishna owns everything. He's the most wealthy, most famous, most opulent. We find people in this world, they want to be wealthy, famous and opulent for the sake of their own self-aggrandizement. But Krishna has all these qualities, but he's simply thinking how to do good to others. Therefore he is a real Mahatma, the orig original Mahatma. There are so many Mahatmas, means sadhu, but sadhu really means who follows in the footsteps of Krishna by trying to give the mercy of Krishna to others and the prototype Mahatma for the modern age is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda who by their own example they try their best to deliver others from the Maya, M-I-R-E of Maya, M-A-Y-A from the dirty hall of Maya and deliver them back to Godhead and those who wish to follow in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, they must try, of course, we are not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are not Nityananda, they are the Supreme Personality of Godhead themselves, but by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, we can also do something to please them by trying to spread the rays of the benediction moon spreading the Sankirtan movement, asking people to chant Hare Krishna, or in the modern age especially, beginning with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasar Thakur, very much uh, increased by his foremost disciple, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swain Prabhupada, we have the Brihat Vridanga, the great Vridanga, very powerful, mission of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books which change people's lives, which have the tremendous effect of spreading the Krishna conscious movement. So just as I was saying, Krishna, his most merciful incarnation, both quantitatively and qualitatively, is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Nityananda. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadatha, Shri Vasadi, Gaur Bhakti, and all the devotees. Ah. So, most merciful incarnation, the best way to 
uh, spread their mercy in the modern age. Prabhupada has given so much emphasis on this book distribution. So I heard from the announcements this morning that you're all very much getting into this mood. So please do that. I can only uh, request you. That's my somewhat contribution. Please try to distribute these books of Srila Prabhupada. Give the mercy to others. And the more we give mercy to others, the more we also get it ourselves, which we can experience. That Krishna conscious in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not simply meant for sitting alone and doing our own bhajan, but it's meant for spreading to others. That is Krishna's own mood. That he would Pritranaya sadhuna, for the sake of delivering the devotees. He's always thinking, Krishna is always thinking how to benefit others. So a devotee means a servant of Krishna and he tries to assist Krishna in his mission of benefiting others, which is very practical in the modern age, that simply by uh, asking people to chant Hare Krishna or giving them Prabhupada's books, that will benefit them tremendously, more than we can imagine. Sometimes we think, well, we gave someone a book and they didn't change, but it will have its effect. Every book, Prabhupada said that, every book distributed means the Sankhita movement is advanced. So let us try to do that. Of course, there are so many other programs also, but as Prabhupada put much stress on this book distribution, so we should also stress that if we had to be Prabhupada Anugas, followers in the glorious footsteps of Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. As you can see, I'm <laughs> looking like this because Any questions about this or anything else related to Krishna consciousness? Was Srila Prabhupada also in the mood of Nityananda Prabhu? Was Srila Prabhupada in the mood of Nityananda Prabhu? I think that's uh, that question hardly needs answering, does it? It's, it's more like a statement than a question. Every atom of Srila Prabhupada's transcendental body was surcharged with the mood of Nityananda. Ka means Kanadakshai Vishnu, Garbhodakshai Vishnu and Kshira Dakshai Vishnu. They are the forms, of the, the Kanadakshai Vishnu lies on the Karana Udak, the, which, which Prabhupada calls the causal ocean. He is the form of the Lord from whom all the universes emanate from in seed form, from the pores of his body. Then he expands himself into the form of Garva Daksha Vishnu and enters every universe. So Karana Daksha Vishnu, he is the Paramatma of the whole material manifestation. Garbhadaksha Vishnu is the Paramatma of the of each universe. And then he expands himself as Kshiradaksha Vishnu, who is simultaneously in the Kshiradak, the milk ocean, and expanded in the heart of every living being and in every atom. So these are the three Purusha avatars. And Lila avatars, they are forms of the Lord who come to perform specific pastimes such as Matsya, Karma, Varaha, Nishinga, Vamana. They're specific forms of the Lord uh, who, they're different from the four-handed Vishnu forms. They have specific form for performing specific leelas, therefore they're called leela avatars. This is all described in teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Did you read that book? You did? Please read again. 
very important book. Vishnu Tattva and Mahat Tattva. Well, Tattva, there are many Tattvas. Rasa Tattva, Shakti Tattva. So there's not, I mean, there's no direct, I mean, if you said Vishnu Tattva and Jiva Tattva, we could discuss, because there's some more direct relation. But if you say Vishnu Tattva and Mahat Tattva, Vishnu Tattva means the, the Vishnu forms. And Mahat Tattva means the uh, universe in its, we could say, pre-primordial state, the very beginning essence of, of the unmanifested material elements. So there's not, it's a, it's a tattva, but it doesn't, you can't really, if you relate it, it's like the Vishnu tattva and Mahat tattva. Is, of course, everything comes from Vishnu, but it's a different kind of tattva altogether. Tattva simply means, how can we say, substance, or, uh, entity, class, classification, the lineage, lineage, difficult to translate, category. Tattva means thatness. There's no such word in English. Category is maybe the best word. So, can I tell you? I can. I wrote a book because I'm asked many times. I thought, well, people are enthusiastic to know. So I wrote a book called My Memories of Srila Prabhupada. I don't have any copies here. Well, I can tell you the first paragraph that I first met Srila Prabhupada in the form of one of his books. Prabhupada is none different from his books. Krishna book, volume two, in those days uh, they were printing in three volumes. So I was staying in someone's house and uh, I saw um, among their books there was one book, Krishna book, volume two. I thought it was a little strange having volume two without volume one. So I opened it and I saw the page, you know people, they fold the page when they want to keep the place, so I saw it was folded on page one. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Somebody had opened it and they didn't have much interest. So I asked, can I read it? Sure. So I read it. And I didn't understand much about it, but in there Prabhupada said, I mean, it's not, this is not directly, this summary. And it was quite a few months after joining the temple that I actually saw Prabhupada. And my first impression, as I wrote in that book, was rather mundane. I was surprised that Prabhupada was so short. Many people had that feeling because when you, when you hear Prabhupada speak, then you... It's not really a very rational conclusion, but you tend to, because he speaks so strongly, you think he must, he must be very physically big, because usually in this world, people with big bodies, they're bold, and people with smaller bodies, they're not. But Prabhupada is actually very short. I, th I, think, uh, I think they said five foot three, which I just have to have my diary here. You don't use freedom in this here. So. What's the, what's the, uh, well, about, I guess, 
be like that up to me. So I was surprised at that. Especially Prabhupada was coming, when I first saw him, he was coming down the stairs. Actually, we all went to the airport, but there was some mix-up and we missed Prabhupada. We were all waiting, and then we were doing kirtan, and then we were told Prabhupada already came and left. Somehow he came in another, t we went to the wrong terminal. If you've been to Heathrow Airport, it's like a huge city in itself. So Prabhupada already gone, and then we went back to the manor, and uh, then, then eventually Prabhupada came down. Maybe it was even the next day. I think it was the, yeah, it was the next day. I saw. We got, I didn't even get to see Prabhupada that day because. So I saw Prabhupada coming down the stairs, and on one side was Brahmananda. If you've ever seen him, huge, both both vertically and horizontally. <laughs> Yeah, so huge. And then Hari Kesh was also thin but very tall and proper. Standing next to them, he looked like half their size. <laughs> but uh, very strong presence. And like. Uh, And Prabhupada was glowing. It's, it's, many times devotees, they explain that, that you could, it's practically physically, it was like the, the, everything would become lighter when Prabhupada came. Devotees, they're very much in a mood of awe and reverence at that time. When they, because so many devotees came from so many countries, and then everyone bowed down, but I, I actually delayed bowing down because I wanted to see Prabhupada more, it's the first time. So when Prabhupada, when, then I bowed down. He went in the temple room and the kirtan was going, well, actually the kirtan stopped. No one stopped it, but it was just that the devotees were so much awestruck by seeing Prabhupada. And they all bowed down and it's a, it's a very big temple room. It's, it's considerably bigger than this completely packed full of devotees. That was the first time I saw Prabhupada. I saw Prabhupada a few times and mostly seen. I, I, was only, I only spoke to Prabhupada once actually when he gave me the Gayatri Mantra. Otherwise I saw him, Prabhupada, he was giving lectures. Once I went on a morning walk like this. And not much personal association. Few lectures I heard. Maybe I can try. I don't have any copies of that. My memories book. I, there's quite a bit actually. If you like the lectures I heard and I guess I don't, I don't have any copies here. Sorry. It's nice. Whenever any Prabhupada disciples come. You should get out of them, surround them. Don't let them go until they promise to write all their memories of Prabhupada. Lock them in the room. <laughs> or maybe you could get them to speak and then you can transcribe them. I just wrote my memories of Prabhupada because I thought, well, I have some memories and it's very valuable. People, they want to know. There are many devotees who had much more association with Prabhupada than I did. So, try and get them to speak them all. It's very, very valuable. Yes. That covers many chapters of the Bhagavatam. Did you read that? Please read. Mm. We have the book also, Teachings of Lord Kapila. Lord Kapila is the incarnation of Where did you hear that Lord Kapila is an incarnation of Shiva? <coughs> well, uh, Kapila, you see, there may be many Kapilas. 
Pila simply means brown color. So there may be many. That's just your imagination, that's all. There's nowhere is it said that Devahuti Putra Kapila is an incarnation of Lord Shiva. Yeah, we should go. Hare Krishna.